The last real thing we're going to look at before we start diving into loads of examples on, on methods, um, because there are so many um, ways that methods can be used, that examples are really important. And really the last structure we need is how to overload a method. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into our um, max program. And the idea of max would work with both integers and doubles. So let's come into Eclipse here. Let's get out of silly program and come back to maximizer. Now, when a method gets constructed, it needs to have the right memory type um, for the program um, to set memory. So I know as a person that I can um, check if a double or an integer is max. Comparing two numbers, for me as a person, I look at the value and I compare them. But for the computer, because they're internally different, I, max might work with both doubles or integers. But because of the memory that needs to get created, um, I need to set a different method to work with doubles. What's nice about overloading is I can use the same name. So I'm going to make static.double max, and I'm going to send to um, max two doubles, number one and number two. So this will create memory and work with memory that are floating points instead of integers. The, notice the signature here is different. Because I'm asking for two different types of numbers coming in than the signature here to the computer, these are two different methods. So I'm going to say if number one is greater than number two, return number one, else, let me clean up my, I like my else's to be tight. I'm going to return number two. So these this overloaded method does the same thing. It compares two numbers and returns the largest number. But because the computer has to set different memory types, it's going to set this for doubles. So I can come down here and I can have a double, um, H-I-J-K-L equals 0 0.99, and double J-J-K-L-M equals 0 0.9902342. And so now in my program, as a programmer, I can look for the max. Well, let me do a system.out. I'm just gonna system.out.printf percent the larger of percent D and percent D is percent D, so I'm leaving spaces for integers. And so I have to give it integers, I comma K, and I'll do max I comma K. So this will print out the larger of two integers, but I can have it compare the larger of percent F and percent F as floating points is percent F. And so now I'll give it L and M, L comma M, max L comma M. Now in this invocation, I don't need to do anything to say it's a double. By putting doubles into it, the Java is going to reference the proper signature. And so when I run this, this can now compare two floating points. And I got cut off here, so maybe I'll do, let's see, um, 8.12, I'll do 12 decimal places, 
8.12, 8.12. So I have enough room for my decimal places. And there I can see the comparison with the extra decimal places. So overloading lets us use the same name for methods that do similar things, but the memory that it creates needs to be different. And so in my program, I can see the max between two numbers. And for me, I can use this same method, no matter if I have double or integers, as long as I create two signature blocks that handle the things correctly. And this really is all we need for the structure of methods. What we can then do is look at some different examples. So in the next videos, I'm, I'm going to go through some of the case studies and we're going to look at some of the programs in the book that use methods to um, repetitively repeat programming tasks. And we'll use combinations of overloading and, and different ways of dealing with this.